Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now, I don't usually make a video on the same game twice in a row, but I just could not stop wondering about how the Athlon 3000G and Ryzen 5 3400G APUs would handle Cyberpunk 2077. The 3000G is a dual-core 4-threaded chip with integrated Vega 3 graphics, and the 3400G is a quad-core 8-threaded chip with integrated Vega 11 graphics. I've paired both with 16 gigs of 3200MHz DDR4 for best results, and I'll be talking about any changes to the clock speeds as we jump into the gameplay. First then, let's talk about about the Athlon. So Cyberpunk will start and run on this CPU with nothing but the integrated Vega graphics. The first problem I had was that I couldn't continue from my saved game. I had to start a new game every time I fired it up with this chip. I'm not saying that this will happen with all 3000G systems and I don't doubt that CD Projekt Red, the amazing team behind this title, will fix this bug. These are very early days after all. All I can say is what I saw at this point in time as of the 11th of December with patch 1.03 installed. The Vega 3 graphics were also overclocked using a stock Wraith cooler from 1100 to 1650 MHz at 1 1.2 volts. Having said that though, the game does actually play with at least 30 frames per second in the countryside. You can probably tell that we've had to use 50% of 720p resolution to achieve this, so we're talking 360p. There will be drops in busy areas, and there were certainly still some frame time issues, so don't try and crank the settings up if you're using one of these. Moving on to a different early scene that takes place indoors, and again the frame rate will be very similar to before. As I walked around this bar you can see that the frame times were going crazy, equating to what is a pretty juddery experience, but this is a £50 or $50 or basically a pretty cheap CPU and GPU solution, all wrapped up into one budget package. I'm not calling this a playable experience, but I am surprised by what I've seen here. The game did crash a couple of times too, which occurred before talking to certain characters, so yeah, that's probably going to be an issue for now. Again though, it's pretty early days, and I can't wait to see how things improve with future patches, because not only will some of these bugs be ironed out, but I'm sure performance may be altered as well for some lower end hardware, whether it's a positive or negative change we'll have to see. But let's move on to the Ryzen 5 3400G. This 4-core 8-threaded chip features onboard Vega 11 graphics which are a fair bit more capable than the 3000G's Vega 3i GPU. That being said, both the CPU and GPU were left at stock speeds here. I was going to test a 3200G as well, but at the moment um, someone's borrowing it so I can't actually test it today. But if you want me to, I'll try and see how this game performs. I imagine the results would be very similar, although that does have just four threads, so I'm sure we'll see some differences, particularly in those CPU-bound areas. I don't want to make too many assumptions, though, until I've actually checked out the performance. The 3400G here can actually run the game at native 720p, and there were no issues with loading previous saves either, so we could pick up right where we left off and load some of our earlier progress for testing. Now moving on to the demanding Night City, and surprisingly we were still hitting an average of 30fps, just above it in fact. One setting I overlooked yesterday was the uh, crowd density with the minimum specs build, which is under the gameplay options and not graphics for some reason, and for this test that is turned down to low as well. I went back and tested the minimum specs rig um, that we tested yesterday with this setting turned way down briefly as well, and while the average frame rate stayed very similar, the frame drops were improved. There were basically less frame dips in those busier areas, but overall there wasn't too much change. Now I was not expecting this frame rate to be honest, and even though we were limited essentially to 720p for the sake of a plus 30 fps experience it certainly beats playing at 360p that being said the 3400g here is more expensive over double the price in fact of the 3000g and harder to find at least here in the uk so i think both cpus have actually done okay in their own right I then enabled the high crowd density to see what sort of performance difference we could expect with far busier streets, and honestly the average figure doesn't really change too much, it's just the percentile figures and frame times 
that are worse off. The city does feel more alive with larger crowds, that's for sure, but it's not worth the dips in performance. When it comes to those big action sequences that take place during missions though, it doesn't really matter how high or low the crowd density is set, because the performance will be pretty much identical, with drops to the low 20s. Overall, I'm pretty satisfied with this CPU. If you bought one of these 3400Gs when they first came out for the intention of gaming at 720p, then I'm sure it served you just fine so far, and should continue to do okay if you don't mind some heavy graphical sacrifices here and there, especially in newer titles. Personally, I think the 3000G also did all right, in all fairness, considering its price and the fact that it's a dual core chip. So yeah, it's still a good option if you want to build an entry level PC from all new parts and you are working with a much tighter budget. You could always add a graphics card to a CPU like that and get better results. And you could always upgrade to let's say a used Ryzen 5 further down the line too and you'd have no problem selling that 3000G if you wanted to put some money towards it. So, a few of you asked me to test the integrated Intel HD graphics as well, and I thought while we're on the subject of integrated graphics, we may as well see if the 3570K's integrated HD 4000 series GPU can actually start the game. Um, from what I've seen, unfortunately the game will not start. I was expecting this, and I think if the game did start, then even so, we'd still be seeing about two frames per second, but who knows? You know, the 3000G ran it with reduced resolution. Maybe if it started here, we may have been able to hit similar frame rates, but yeah, it was looking pretty doubtful, I think, and I at least hope that it would start, but yeah, it's not going to, unfortunately. Overall then, I think Cyberpunk 2077 is a, well, it's a pretty tough game to run, um, especially with older hardware, but there are lots of graphical options that you can mess around with, and that is always welcome. It's always nice to see the AMD APUs fire up and run these games too, so yeah, I'm pretty happy with this, and I hope that with future patches, we may start to see a few more frames per second uh, coming from these two chips and other APUs on the market as well. Much like it has been for the past few months with game releases, your best bet is to just turn everything down to low and play with 720p. The 3400G at least still seems to be capable of that for now. For how long that will last, I don't know. It depends on the release, I guess. And the 3000G does require a little more tweaking. And I think as we move into... Uh, what is the next generation of console games, I think this will be reflected with PC releases as well, or the extra technology that's being added, things like that, games they're about to get a lot more demanding, and I think Cyberpunk 2077 is representative of that. Anyway, thank you very much for watching, if you enjoyed it, leave a like on it, leave a dislike if you didn't, let me know if the APUs performed better or worse than you were expecting in the comments down below, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, and hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one.